Hello, and welcome to our lesson on order of operations. We're going to try to simplify this expression by following order of operations, also known as PEMDAS. PEMDAS stands for the order in which we have to do our, our math. We have parentheses, exponents, multiply and divide, add and subtract. Uh, these right here, exponents, multiply, divide, add, and subtract, these are a natural order in which we do things. We, we have a grouped multiplication as exponents, grouped addition is multiplying, and then we have add and subtract. Now the parentheses is a very important grouping symbol. And the grouping can be parentheses, it can also be brackets, it can be braces, um, but you want to do the inside first. So whatever you can do on the most inside, then you do that. So you can see that we have a parentheses here that we can work within. We can, as we work down the page, we can work within this parentheses and we can work within this parentheses. We got to do all these things before we can do the squared part. Now all this is in preparation for unit two, lesson one, where we're going to be solving two-step equations. And we are need to understand how to do order of operations to successfully navigate solving problems. Here we have an expression to simplify. And within the first parentheses here, we have a fraction problem and we need a common denominator what three and two can go into. So I need to get to sixths because the first multiple that three and two reach is six. So I need to change that five thirds. I have to multiply by two over two. And the reason I do that is that is equivalent of the number one. So if I multiply a number times one, if I multiply a number times one, I just get that number. And that's what two over two is. Two over two is equal to one. So I can do any number as long as the numerator and the denominator are the same. And we call this the identity property of multiplication. The identity property of addition would be if you add a zero to a number, it remains the same. So if we multiply 5 thirds times 2 over 2, we get 10 over 6. And if you look at 9 over 2, negative 9 over 2. Remember, this: the sign is as important as the number is. This one I have to multiply by 3 over 3 because that gets me to 6. Here, negative 9 times negative times positive 3 is negative 27. So I, I'm going to begin by writing one step at a time. So here we need to get a common denominator. So go ahead and write these notes on the paper that you're provided, or you can use a blank paper. So this common denominator then is 10 over 6 minus 27 over 6. Uh, now we got minus 6, and here we have we have a multi we have a subtraction and we have multiplication. So we go down here and we have to see that multiplication is before subtraction. So again, we have this, uh, we cannot do three minus five. That would be a big, big mistake. So I don't want to do that. Okay, so here would be a mistake. Oh, let's say I did um, negative two times negative 11 over 15. That is very wrong because you didn't follow PEMDAS. You mixed up and you did this add and subtract before you did multiply and divide. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. 
So you have to do the multiplication here. Now, this is an interesting multiplication. This is an integer, so I can put that over 1. And now I'm doing a negative times a negative. So let's write the 3, bringing the 3 down. Now we have two negatives. Our result's going to be a positive. Remember, uh, positive times a positive is a positive. Positive times a negative is a negative. Negative times a positive is a negative. And negative times a negative is a positive. So two negatives is a positive. Now I could do some cross-canceling. We're going numerator to numerator and denominator to do denominator. So I could write 55 over 15. Or I could cross-cancel now. So it's easier to cross-cancel now. I know that if 5 is in the numerator, there's one of them. And there's 3 times 5 here. So I'm going to cross out 15 and put a 3. And now I've already simplified and I have negative 11 over 3. Or 2 negatives, sorry. Positive 11 over 3. And here I have minus, and I have to go to this last parentheses. And within this parentheses, I have a subtraction, and I have a multiplication, and I have an exponent to evaluate 3 cubed. And then outside of the parentheses, I have a squared. Now, we have to do everything inside the parentheses first, and then there's priorities inside the parentheses. Okay, so I don't want to subtract because that's lowest on the list. Multiplying is next highest on the list, but exponents is even higher than that. So I have to do the 3 cubed. That's why when you do one step at a time, you can then... I'm going to change this time symbol to a dot because that's a little more efficient, better. And 3 cubed, that's 3 times 3 times 3. It's not 9, it's 27. Okay. So we've accomplished one full step. That's just what we call one step. You have to go one step at a time because it's very complicated. There's a lot of things to do. Here we can combine, we have a common denominator of 6, and we can do 10 minus 27. Now you might be thinking, God, that's a difficult subtraction. It's not. Positive 10 minus 27, you end up with negative 17. So in math, you have to get the sign correctly. The sign is equally as important as the number. Okay. Here we have minus 6, and that's a... There's a times going on here, but we have to go inside again. And now we we want to be able to add these together, so we need to be into thirds. We're kind of back up at this step. we got to get to thirds. The equivalent of three in thirds is nine thirds. So if I took three times three over three, that would give me nine over three. And that's what we've done for the equivalent number plus 11 over 3. And then we're going to subtract. So there, we did inside the parentheses. We didn't touch this number yet because it's outside the parentheses. And we have minus 12. Okay, we can do some cross-canceling here too before we multiply. This, this number would be very huge. So I have to ask myself, okay, if I have the 9 in the denominator and 27, is 3 times 9. So I'm looking at their factors. 9 times 1. 9 goes into 9 one time. 9 goes into 27. It's in the numerator. 3 times. And now I can do negative 7 times 3 is negative 21. And that's squared. So you finished a second step. Step 2. Okay, so this number's all by itself. I can't subtract it with 6 because, look, the 6 is multiplying. That multiplying is a higher order in PEMDAS. Multiplying has to be done before adding and subtracting, so I can't subtract these numbers. This is one of the biggest mistakes that kids make. 
They have a number out here, minus something, but this is multiplying, so you can't do this. Okay, so next let's go to negative 17 over 6, minus 6. We can do things inside the parentheses, though. 9 plus, they're in thirds. I can add the numerators. And now here I get minus... And I could do 12 minus 21. If I think of what would 21 minus 12 be would be 9. But this is, the bigger number is negative. So 12 minus 21, what is it? That's negative 9. And then we have squared. So remember, we talked about this being an invisible ne negative 1 times negative 9. But we have exponent here. Exponent has to be evaluated before I can multiply this negative and negative. It's going to be a big, important thing here to get right because we're going to get positive 81 and then times negative. If you did, if you multiplied these first, you'd get positive 9 and then squared. You'd get the wrong answer. You don't want the wrong answer. You want the right answer. Negative 17 over 6. Now we have a multiplication here. You can simplify or you can multiply and then simplify. We'll just multiply and then simplify. Negative 6 times 20 is minus 120 over 3. And we have minus, and now we have to evaluate the negative 9 times negative 9. That's negative, so negative 9 squared. We'll keep it in a parentheses. Negative 9 squared, two negatives, make positive 81. Negative 17 over 6. Um, negative 120 divided by 3 is minus 40. And now we can drop this parentheses. Negative times a positive is minus 81. Now it's going to be a little simple. More, It's going to be simpler if I apply the commutative property of addition because I don't want to uh, have to put these in six and these in six if I can add these two integers together. So I'm going to go ahead and add the negative 40 minus 81 for minus 121. And then I do have to get a common denominator. So I'll need a calculator. You can use calculator.com or something like that. So I need negative 121 times 6. Because I'm multiplying by 6 over 6. Right? So I need to convert negative 121 times 6 over 6 gives me negative 726 over 6. So I'm going to change this integer to this fraction, this improper fraction. And that's okay that you have an improper fraction. We don't use mixed numbers in algebra, so we need to use improper fractions. And then we end up with adding these together. On the negative side, negative 17 minus 726. That is going to be negative 743 over 6. Make sure I'm going to take that negative 726 plus negative 17 negative 743 over 6. And that's our answer. We're going to circle it. Now, in order to practice these steps, we're going to go step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4, step 5, step 6, step 7, and your final answer is step eight. You have eight steps to do. So the way you want to practice this is 
you want to get a second sheet of paper with the same problem and you want to have it on the back so you're going to flip your paper over and it's going to have this on the back and you're going to go ahead and simplify it in the same step so when you get stuck you're going to go ahead and flip it back over oh okay that's what i do at step one so you're going to do it on the back you're going to do step one and label them step two three four five six seven to step eight and so you'll practice as many times until you could get it exactly right so at the end i want you to capture the front page that you did with the ed puzzle and capture the back page and that'll be an assignment to turn in uh, separate from the ed puzzle okay